Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to worship this morning here at Bethany. We're blessed to have you with us. Whether you are here in person or joining us online, we are one body of Christ in the world gathered together in God's love. I have several announcements for you today. Just a reminder, the capital campaign continues. We've had several thousand dollars come in. Um, our goal is still 150000 for our 150th year. So if you have not yet given to the capital campaign, please remember to do so. And within the next couple of weeks, we are going to start putting up a thermometer downstairs that you can follow the progress as we go through this. Um, Sunday school, believe it or not, is coming up in about six weeks. So if you are a teacher or a student, uh, you will be hearing from us soon. The mission trip was very successful. Both of our adult chaperones are here. Our kids are all in bed sleeping today. <laughs> but it was very, very, very successful. And a thank you to both Allison and Doug for making that trip go this, this year. The, if you remember, <clears throat> excuse me, our kids were supposed to be going to the youth gathering, and the youth gathering got canceled. So thank you to Allison especially and Doug for making this work for getting our kids up to Rochester, Minnesota to do the mission trip. They had a great time. They did a lot of work. We'll be talking about that a little bit later. Um, keep in mind that we have our anniversary coming up. September the 25th is the special worship service. The bishop will be here and all kinds of things will be going on that day here at Bethany. <clears throat> and then on October the 2nd, we actually have a banquet at Enticing Cuisine. Tickets will start going on sale for those soon, so keep an eye out for that as well. Related, sort of, is the fact that Melissa Daly, Melissa is one of our um, daughters of the congregation. She's also a seminary student. Melissa's going to be here um, to lead and preach in two weeks with me, so she's going to be preaching in a couple of weeks. Many of you will remember Melissa, so please come on out, support her. Um, that is on August the 14th. We get to see how she's doing as she continues her progress, her journey through seminary. Uh, let's see. Our little, little library outside, you might have noticed the box that was put in a couple weeks ago. We are going to dedicate that next Sunday after worship. So please come on out with us next Sunday after worship to dedicate the uh, little library. And then that will be filled with books for people from the community. Of course, it's supposed to also be like, what, 150 degrees next week, but that's all right. We'll go outside briefly and dedicate the little library. The Lutheran Fellowship Bowling League is returning this fall. If you are interested, talk to Dale Howard. Chip in. We are collecting back-to-school supplies for children in need here in Batavia and around the area. The list of items is needed is on the welcome desk. So please take a look at that, bring those in over the next couple weeks. I think I've covered all that. Um, just an update that Carlene Altman's funeral, her visitation is Friday, this Friday, at 4 o'clock, and then the funeral itself is at 6.30, both on Friday night here at Bethany. So if you're interested in joining the family, please come on out and do so. That's for Carlene Altman. And then um, our condolences and our love goes out to the family of Helen R. Anderson. Helen passed away earlier this week on Wednesday. We will keep them in our prayers as well today. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks for this day. We pray your blessing upon all of us gathered and those who cannot be here today. We pray your blessing especially upon the family of Helen R. Anderson as they mourn her loss. Also the family of Carlene Altman, be with them and grant them strength and healing and comfort in the days, weeks, and months ahead. We also today pray for joy for Nicole and Peyton, who celebrated their marriage yesterday. Grant them your presence each and every day as they grow in love. We pray this, O Lord, in your holy name. Amen. I had the honor of doing the marriage for Nicole and Peyton at Bluestem Barn in Hebron, Illinois, yesterday. It was a very cool venue. I invite you to stand as we are <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning all depends on our possessing.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We continue this morning with our first reading. Today's first reading is from Ecclesiastes chapters 1 and 2. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel and Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see, all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish. Yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 49, verses 1 through 11, responsively. Hear this, all you peoples. Hearken, all who dwell in the world, you of high degree and low, rich and poor, together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb and set forth my riddle upon the harp. Why should I be afraid in evil days? when the wickedness of those at my heels surround me. The wickedness of those who put their trust in their goods and boast of their great riches can never ransom ourselves or deliver to God the price of our life. 
for the ransom of our life is so great and we should never have enough to pay it in order to live forever and ever and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also. Like the dull and stupid, they perish and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Their graves shall be their homes forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation, though they call the lands after their own names. Even though honored, they cannot live forever. They are like the beasts that perish. Today's second reading is from Colossians chapter 3. So, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these are the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have been stripped off of the old self with its practices, and you have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Lord, Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have an ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. You may be seated.
What are the things that we treasure in life? For some of us, it is specific possessions that we own. When I was a child, I remember how much I just loved my bike and my baseball bat. Those types of things that you would use every day as a, as a kid around the neighborhood, especially during the summer. As you get older, sometimes you start to value and treasure other things, such as power or titles or money. The biggest house, that 1968 Mustang. <clears throat> and then as, as, as we get even older, I think we finally start to, to focus in a little bit more on the things that are the most important, the relationships, time with our kids and our grandkids or, or with cousins or with nieces and nephews and, and that connection that exists. For Gail and I, with our granddaughter, we have, we have this big stuffed bear, Cody, Cody the bear, who stands about this tall on me, and, and we've become the Cody grandparents. I mean, Layton cannot have enough of that bear. She wants to be around the bear all the time. <clears throat> and so that time with Layton and, and, and with Cody have become <laughs> our, our treasures, if you will. But as time goes on, our treasures change a little bit. <clears throat> the truth is, as we read through these, <clears throat> excuse me, as we read through these lessons today, we start to see that Jesus is prompting us, really prompting us, to stay focused on God and less on our possessions. We see that with the rich farmer who is all excited about the things that he has stored up. I never have to work again. I can eat, drink, and be merry. And then his life is demanded of him immediately. And who gets all those possessions? <clears throat> his relationship with God was more important than the possessions that he had stored up, than the food that he had stored up. I kind of laugh when I read that because I think back. <clears throat> my cousins and I had this little cartoon that we passed around a little bit. My, my uncle had a garage full of tools. And I mean, like, there were things in there that I don't think he even knew what they did but you might need it someday. And you didn't want just one. You needed at least five or six in case you lost a couple. And so over the course of time, he had built up this huge garage full of stuff. And so we had this little cartoon that we had found. I think it was a far side. And it was a, a dad opening up his garage door and stuff comes falling out. And the dad is saying to his son, someday this will all be yours. And the sun is just standing there. <laughs> <clears throat> we do tend to do things like that. As my uncle got older, though, he started, like I said, to switch towards the relationships, right? And then he'd go into Menards, and instead of buying tools, he would buy like 12 pounds of M&Ms <laughs> and give them out. To Allie got a big tin to take to school that lasted, what, two years or something like that? <laughs> can't possibly eat that many M&Ms that fast. But it became more about the relationships over time instead of the possessions. The relationships became the treasures. And so our relationships aren't meant to be the treasures. Allie, come on up. I did not warn her I was doing this. 
you can stand up and mic that. Guys, I didn't warn you I was doing this either, so I apologize. <clears throat> All right. So you got to lead the mission trip this past week. You guys got to serve different people in different places. Some of those people are really desperate for any possessions whatsoever. I was going to ask you to share with us probably what you would consider for yourself to have been the most meaningful part of this mission trip. by about 8 o'clock, sometimes 8.30 in the morning, and we were out of the hotel all day, and we would come back after dinner. So we were gone all day. We were working with um, the exchange, which helps the homeless and low income. Uh, we were working at a food pantry. We were working at a summer camp for kids. We were working at Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we were working at a coffee roaster, um, small business, um, we were um, at a neighborhood event. It's so hard just to pick one moment. But if I had to pick, I think overall, um, seeing how tired everybody was coming back at the end of the day, but also how joyful and how refreshed they were and how ready they were just to get up the next day and go do it all again. So it was the, the faith that they had, it was the ambition that they had, it was the drive that they had. I think that was something that really meant the most to me. And you know, to that point, <clears throat> when you start to talk about treasuring the relationships more so than the possessions, I mean, they were treasuring the opportunity to meet new people and to serve new people, mm -hmm. complete strangers, literally complete strangers they had never met until that day. But that opportunity to serve folks energizes you. I mean, it really does. It energizes your spirit and energizes your soul. And I think we need to understand that has to do with what we treasure. Relationship, whether it's new or old, or possessions, right? So I would also ask you to share um, the most fun part of the trip. I think one of the most fun days that we had, um, it was a lot of work the whole week, but um, the relationships in the evening um, we were able to spend time at the county fair, which is about a mile from the hotel. Um, we got to do so many afternoon activities, but um, Wednesday evening, there was a um, neighborhood park event that um, our area coordinator, Jason, set up. He'd been trying to do this for a long time and just kind of get the neighbors together, so he asked for our help. Um, through partnerships with his church and other churches in the area. I think we had four different churches there. Um, we got funds for food, so we bought hot dogs, brats, chips, um, things like that for about 100 people. Um, there were games and um, kickball, wiffle ball, uh, nine square, and it was an opportunity. The kids worked to help set this up, but then it was an opportunity for the kids to sit and get to know the neighborhood kids, play with them, get to know the neighborhood parents, um, get to pet the dogs and play with the dogs too, um, relationships with animals, um, just building relationship in general and being able to really connect one-on-one -on -one with some of these people um, in the neighborhood and um, working with them as well to create what we hope will be a, now an annual or um, um, ongoing multi-event over the summer. Yeah. And explain who Jason is real quick for everybody because this is a very cool story. Yes. So um, we organized our mission trip through a group called Service Learning Camps. Um, their executive director is Don. Um, I had been going back and forth connecting with Don. Um, Don had connected me to Jason, and Jason is our Rochester, Minnesota area coordinator. Jason lives in Rochester, and he, um, he has done a lot of the work to put us in contact with small businesses, nonprofits, um, the different people that we would be working with in the area. Jason is just, he's an amazing person. He has a servant heart. He loves connecting with different people. And um, so when we connected, he kept reaching out to me going, so I have this as an option, this as an option, this as an option. What do you think you, your kids would like to do? And I turned around and I just said yes. <laughs> and um, he is just, he is a force in the community. Everybody seems to really know who Jason is and um, everything from working to uh, working with the little kids right around his house in his, um, in his neighborhood. 
Um, Jason opened up his house to us and just said, if you need rest, anything, water, just walk inside my house, say hi to my wife Heather, say hi to my kids, and get what you need and come back out to the park. So um, he is just, he was an amazing person to work with and a um, refreshing person to work with, kind of gave us a new look on serving others and um, kind of what that looks like through his eyes. Um, one more quick thing I will share. Jason not only organi um, organizes mission trips around the Rochester area where he lives, but Jason also goes back and forth to Belize several times and works with um, different people on an international trip through service learning camps. Um, so um, actually I'm wearing a necklace today that he, um, he bought from a woman who makes them in Belize and every person that he meets, every person that he serves with, he gives them a necklace as kind of a way to support this woman in Belize and also um, as a connection point, as a gift and saying, hey, thank you for taking time to talk with me, serve with me, um, create relationship and share with me. Yeah, I think <clears throat> as, we, as we hear these stories and there will be more to be shared over the next few weeks, the key here is that as Jesus points out in the parable that he shares, the greatest thing, the greatest treasure that you can have in life is the relationship you have with God and with each other. We all know that Jesus is the one that said to us, the two greatest commandments are love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. This parable has that mm -hmm. dripping all over it. Relationship with God, relationship with each other, that is what you should treasure above anything and everything else. Now, one other thing. I get to do this because I'm dad, right? <laughs> uh -oh. So, Allie actually tomorrow starts, she just got back, and tomorrow she starts as the full-time youth director in Villa Park at... St. Paul Lutheran. St. Paul Lutheran. So, it has been just an absolute blessing and an honor to work with you over this past year. I'm very proud of you, Mom, and I both are very proud of you. I'm going to do a blessing for you, and then we're going to head forward with the service. Come on up. Mark, come on up. You are a part of this, too. <clears throat> so why don't you do one shoulder, I'll do the other, or whatever works. Lord, we pray your blessing upon Allison as she embarks on her ministry. We pray for the youth of St. Paul's in Villa Park. We pray for all the different adventures that they are going to have together, that both Allison and the youth will continue to grow together in their faith, serve one another and the communities around them, and continue to treasure the relationships that you build within them. We pray this, O oh Lord, in your holy name. Amen. Let's give her a hand. She did a lot of work this past year. Please stand as you are.
together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for building up of your church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, Bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and for the healing of the nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress. Renew us at your table of mercy. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. O oh God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church councils and committees and give them clarity for the ministry at Bethany Lutheran Church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are resurrection. We give you thanks for all your saints. Inspire us by their example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in love toward you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We continue this morning with our offering.
God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you in your open hand and blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord in our God. Sorry. Let us give thanks to God. No worries. I never do this perfect either. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all, who the, all those who believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in this, his holy supper. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks. Come, for all is now ready. The congregation may be seated. Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. 
This is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. This is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.